Big Soros money linked to Occupy Wall Street. Labor unions, communists, community organizers, socialists, and anti-capitalist agitators have all joined together to Occupy Wall Street and protest against greed, corporations, and bankers. But despite efforts to portray the movement as leaderless or grassroots, it is becoming obvious that there is much more going on behind the scenes than meets the eye. Billionaire financier George Soros' fingerprints, for example, have been all over the anti-Wall Street campaign from the very beginning. And this week, the infamous hedge fund boss publicly announced his sympathy for the protesters and their complaints about bailouts despite the fact that he lobbied for even greater unconstitutional handouts to bankers in 2009. Actually I can understand their sentiment, frankly, he told reporters while announcing a large donation to the United Nations. I can sympathize with their grievances. But Soros' support for the protesters goes far beyond his tepid public statements. In fact, the original call to Occupy Wall Street came from the magazine Adbusters, an anti-consumerist publication financed by, among other sources, the Soros-funded Tides Foundation. Other Soros-backed outfits promoting big government some with myriad ties to the Obama administration are also publicly driving the occupation campaign. Movian.org, for instance, has received millions of dollars from the billionaire banker. And now, the group is urging its supporters to join the Occupy Wall Street movement as well. Over the last two weeks, an amazing wave of protests against Wall Street and the big banks has erupted across the country, Movian said in a recent email to supporters, praising the brave demonstrators. On Wednesday, Movian members will join labor and community groups in New York City for a huge march down to the protest site the biggest yet. On top of supplying activists to join the demonstrations, Movian is also staging what it calls a massive virtual march on Wall Street online. The Internet-based demonstrations are a collaborative effort with another radical and well-connected outfit tied to Soros called Rebuild the Dream. Led by self-described communist and former Obama administration Tsar Van Jones, the Dream movement is a partnership between a host of Soros-financed progressive groups. Big Labor and even Planned Parenthood the largest abortion provider in America, which receives hundreds of millions of tax dollars each year are partners, too. Together, we led hundreds of thousands of voices of solidarity from the American Dream movement for the protests across the country and show just how widespread outrage at the Wall Street banks really is, Movian boasted in its email. Other groups working with Rebuild the Dream are also publicly hyping the demonstrations. And more than a few of them are on the Soros payroll as well. Some examples include People for the American Way, Planned Parenthood, Campaign for America's Future. Democracy for America, Leadership Conference for Civil and Human Rights, Common Cause, Public Campaign, and many more. Soros, of course, has a long history of financing organizations targeting the American system of government. He has also served on the board of the immensely influential Global Governance Promoting Council on Foreign Relations. Just last year, Soros claimed that the brutal communist dictatorship ruling mainland China should lead what he calls the New World Order. The Chinese tyrants, meanwhile, have also been touting Occupy Wall Street through the regime's propaganda organs. But Soros does not love the despots in Beijing for their commitment to equality or democracy. As the New American reported, behind Soros and his tens of billions lies even more wealth and power the unimaginably vast Rothschild banking empire. One of the richest men in the world today, Soros has been in legal trouble for corruption before in France, for instance, he was fined more than $2 million for his illegal scheming. So, critics noted, it might seem ironic that the textbook example of a corrupt financier would finance a protest supposedly aimed at corrupt financiers. But the irony hardly ends there. Union bosses and others intimately linked to President Obama whose top campaign contributors included Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and other big banks are also playing a key role in the Wall Street protests. The protesters are even recycling administration talking points such as the old the rich should be forced to pay their fair share, despite the fact that the Buffett rule tax proposal being advanced would almost exclusively soak what remains of the middle class.
but that might be the point. According to reports and analysts, the whole anti-Wall Street movement has been carefully orchestrated by the Obama-linked anti-capitalist union titans and tax-funded community organizers. A troubling plot to essentially finish off capitalism was exposed earlier this year, and at the time it was blasted as economic terrorism. Even more disturbing, it was uncannily similar to the growing Wall Street demonstrations. Community organizer Stephen Lerner of the SEU, a regular White House guest, was caught on video in March discussing the scheme to bring down the stock market and destabilize the nation all with the stated goal of redistributing wealth. And while the whole conspiracy was not revealed because Lerner suspected police were present, the strategies he mentioned included civil disobedience and mass anti-banker protests. Another conspirator said to be pulling the strings, disgraced Agarn founder and union boss Wade Rathk, was advocating massive day of rage protests targeting bankers earlier this year. And he is also closely tied to Obama, who actually used to work for Rathk's community organizing outfit. Acorn, of course, was recently exposed engaging in widespread criminal activity while receiving millions of federal tax dollars. But after the organization filed for bankruptcy, its tentacles are taking over under new names and still receiving government handouts. Rathke is also a founding board member of the Soros-funded Tides Foundation, a key source of money for a Buster's magazine, which first called for the Wall Street occupation, and countless other anti-business groups and he is directly tied to more than a few unions including the SEU. Beyond big labor and Soros front groups, as critics call them, is also a vast collection of socialist and Marxist organizations supporting the demonstrations. The Socialist Party USA, the Marxist-oriented Workers World Party, the International Committee of the Fourth International and the Communist Party USA-affiliated People's World are all publicly and openly backing the movement. While the occupation movement purports to be leaderless, in reality, critics say its leaders and financiers are barely concealed. According to analysts, the protests which are quickly spreading to cities across the United States, Canada, and Europe actually represent a well-orchestrated operation being used by the very same elite 1% supposedly being protested against. The official goals remain murky so far, almost certainly not by chance. But it is becoming increasingly apparent that liberty and honest money are not among the demands. Rather, bigger government, higher taxes, and an end to what remains of the free market system seem to be at the top of the list.